Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi Gyms. If you didn't watch the last episode, go back and watch it. I think it was still five the last episode was. So we did lose the last battle, which means that obviously we do have to make a new team. This is, if you don't know how Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi Gyms works, basically we take on the gym leader's role that happens in the main game. We are undefeatable until someone comes along and defeats us in a Wi-Fi battle. And you may ask, how do we decide the typings? We don't. I just pick a random type in randomly. So today we are. So this is how it's gonna work. I'm gonna be a ghost type gym leader, and if until someone comes along and defeats me, every week we'll have one gym battle where someone tries and defeats us. And boy, do we have a battle planned right up for you guys. But let's see. He'll be running with. So the first Pokemon we have on our Ghost type gym is Driftblim. It's a modest nature. It's got unburdened. I don't think it's, it has an item. I think I gave it leftovers. I actually can't remember if any of these Pokemon had any items. I think most of them do. Yeah, I, and I know what. But I think this one did have the leftovers. But you did just kind of see what my team was just because I was looking for the items. But yeah, Driftblim has Toxic, Stockpile, Minimizing, Baton Pass. Next up we have our Golurk, um, who is an Iron Fist Golurk, we're holding the Expo Belt with Earthquake, Shadow Punch, Power Punch and Mega Punch. Then we have an Aegis Slash. Now we did use an Aegis Slash in the Steel Type um, in the steel type Gym, so we've seen how um, powerful Aegis Slash can be. This, I think this is actually the same one, you know, Quiet Nature, Stance, stance Change, Holding Spell Tag, the same moveset. But yeah, it's moveset is Shadow Sneak, King Shield, Sacred Sword and Sword Stance. Then we have a Chandelure who should be holding a life orb but is an infiltrator with flamethrower, sh flamethrower, shadow ball, energy ball and pain split. Then we have Gengar who is our mega holding the Gengar right of course but it's got, it does have levitate for now. It has shadow ball, sludge bomb, dazzle and gleam and thunderbolt and then lastly we have Sableye who is a prankster set, set of Sableye with will-o-wisp, foul play, confuse rain and recover holding the dread, dread play for that nice and powerful foul play. So that is our team, you guys. Let's just get a quick summary of them before we head into the battle that we have planned for you guys today. Alright, guys. This is a battle we have planned for you today. As always, it is a 6 versus 6. You know, you can... you choose, yeah, I would recommend 6 versus 6 because obviously that's how gym leaders will want to be. But we do have Leonard against us today with a Talonflame, a Venusaur, a Lucario, Greninja, Charizard and Mewtwo. So this team is very interesting, but let's head into the battle and see how our first ghost type as a uh, our first battle as a ghost type gym leader went. So let's just load it up for you now. And honestly, I don't want to spoil the result to you guys, but it was definitely a one-sided battle. This battle was very, very interesting. So I sent out the save life first, as expected. He goes out into the town flame, being a, a, one of his fastest Pokemon on the, on the team. Straight away, I go for the Confuse Ray because obviously I can't burn this thing because it is a fire type. So I'm really hoping that it does hit itself in Confusion here. It does, which means that I can do some decent damage to it on the next turn. But on the next turn, it does snap out of your Confusion, which is really annoying. But it does go for the U-turn, which means that he, he is going to swap out to another Pokemon of his. And now he swaps out into the Venusaur. So this Venusaur is about to catch some damage from a foul play. I think this does a good half. I'm not sure. It does almost half. But now because it's grass poison, I can burn it. And I think this actually was a physical Venusaur. So he goes for the sleep powder, but he does miss. Which means I can get a Confuse Ray off the next time around. So I do go for the Confuse Ray. Meaning I'm hoping it does hit itself in confusion because you know Venusaur can be a big threat, especially if it's, if it's a Mega Venusaur. So Venusaur does hit itself in confusion and does get some burn damage off as well. So now at this point I'm just trying to recover back the health I can. Oh no, actually I went for foul play because he does move first, but the burn damage combined with his foul play should finish him off. So down goes the Venusaur, so it is 6-5 to me right now because it did swap out the Talon Flame. Goes back out into the Talon Flame, which means that I can confuse Ray this thing again, hoping that it will hit itself in this confusion again. I keep on saying again a lot, I know. 
So he is confused and this time he does hit on the first time round. Goes for flame charge which of course isn't the most powerful move you can run on a fire type move you can run on a town flame but it does raise your speed. So unless that's what he's thinking. He's trying to think um, okay so you turn flame charge I'll pass my speed stats onto the next Pokemon waiting. So that's what he's trying to hope to do. He's trying to get, build up his speed while he can so he can um, swap out with his U-turn. You know, pass his speed stats onto it. But I'm not actually sure if U-turn and moves like Volt Switch and that get affected by stats changes. Because I think the only move which actually passes your stats on is Baton Pass. I'm not sure. Let me know if you guys know that in the comment section below. But he does break through the confusion once more. Takes my Sableye down into the yellow, which is very, very scary. Because it is at like plus four speed right now, because it, but it doesn't matter because I am a, I am at like a um, a Sableye which is only meant to burn and stall people out and just wait until they die. But unfortunately, I do go for physical contact move, which means that I do get affected by the flame body when it dies. So now I've got a burn to worry about as well as 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 well as worrying about um, other things. So Lucario does go for E speed on a ghost type, not um. Obviously, E speed is a normal type move, so it doesn't affect me, which means I can get the Will O Wisp off. But of course, the burn damage is going to do some in some health to both of us, meaning that now I need to try and stall him out. So I go for the recover because obviously, whatever move he's going to go for is going to hurt me. But he goes for a psychic, which obviously doesn't affect me because I'm a dark type. So mo we're both going to take more burn damage. So it's obvious that this guy doesn't know Save Alive very well. Or obviously doesn't know that I'm running a ghost monotype team. But I do get the confused ray off, meaning that he's now going to be confused. And he does hit himself in the confusion, and along with that burn damage, that is at least going to take him down into the yellow, which is very, very helpful. And now I think at this point, I do go for recover just to get myself back up to almost full health. So yeah, I take I get take myself up to 118, which is really helpful. And he does get, he does get um, a, a move off being Dragon Pulse, so this is a mixed Lucario, and honestly, I think, um, I'm not actually sure if it's a mixed Lucario, because I think he just has E speed for priority, but he does get a crit with the Dragon Pulse that he just used, meaning that next turn, to next time out, I do have to use Recover to get my health, health back up to what I can. But it does snap out of confusion, goes for another Dragon Pulse. The reason why that first Dragon Pulse did so much was because it was a critical hit. So it does take me back down into the red, and unfortunately for me, I do live with 7 HP. So I go for another recover because I really want to keep this Sableye alive as long as I can, just because of his other Pokemon that he's going to swap out into. So he gets off his third Dragon Pulse, which eventually I think does do me in. Because, yeah, because. Sableye has a HP, but with that burn, that is going to kill my Sableye, unfortunately. So down goes my Sableye, so I'm thinking, okay, what do I do now? Do I set up, or do I just go and kill him? So he goes for the Psychic, which is obviously going to do a number on my Aegis Slash, but it's not much, because I am I am Steel-type, and it is not a stab type move on Lucario, meaning that I can get on my Sword Stance, because as I know, he can practically do nothing to me. So the burn damage is going to kill him, which is what I was really hoping for because I knew the burn damage would kill him while I set up my sword dances. Now he goes out into the Charizard. Now at this point, Charizard can do a number to my Aegis Lodge because it is super effective. Even though I'm in my defensive form, I do live with 5 hit points after a critical hit. So I do get, I, I'm at plus 4 attack right now. So the only thing I can do is scout what he's going to do next. So I go for King Shield, and it's obvious that he's trying to kill off my um, Aegis Slash. So I go out, I go for the Shadow Sneak now because I do move first, and this is going to do a number to his Charizard, taking it out with one hit. And I'm really thankful that um, Aegis Slash didn't get a burn, otherwise this battle would have ended up a hell of a lot differently. So now he goes out into the Mewtwo, and he does have pressure, and even though um, you. Mewtwo does mega evolve into Mewtwo, Mewtwo Y. I'm still going to outspeed with that priority Shadow Sneak. So I'm thinking that I'm, I don't know if he actually does, if um, Mega Mewtwo Y does have more defenses than regular Mewtwo. I'm not sure about that. But I do scout to see what he's going to try and do. He goes for the Ice Beam just to finish me off. So I scouting is good, but 
there's really no point if you're like you're on low HP and you know you can take this thing out with one hit just like that. So Mega Mewtwo goes down, really one of his major threats on his team. Now next he goes out into the Greninja. Now I did really want to scout this thing just to see if it was a physical or a special Greninja. So I go for the King Shield and he goes for the Night Slash. So he's obviously a physical Greninja, but because that um, King Shield was up, his attack is reduced by two stages, meaning that I can at least get some damage off just before I die. Obviously, this is going to be a um, resistant move because he is Dark type and not a protein Greninja, even though it wouldn't matter because he still would have been a Dark type due to the Night Slash anyway. So Aegis Slash does go down. Next up, I go out into my Gengar. Now, you guys know why I went out into the Gengar. I could Dazzling Gleam it. I could Thunderbolt it. And honestly, at this point, I think I went for Thunderbolt just because it does 10 more than um, before. But it does, does go for the nice Slash and O-Kills me. Uh, with a critical hit as well. Had it, I still get the feeling like Mega Gengar would have died even, even if it wasn't a critical hit. So at this point, I go out into my Chandelure and he's going to go for the Water Shrieker. Because he does know I'm a fire type, because obviously he can see the flames and what have you. Although I don't know why he went for the water streak when he could have gone for a night slash or something. But this this chandelier does run with an energy ball, so this is obviously going to finish off the Greninja. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was his last Pokemon. I do take life orb damage, but it doesn't matter because I did defeat him. So we do have our first victory for our ghost type team there, you guys. If you guys did enjoy the battle, as always, make sure you leave a like. Just stay up to date with all the latest of set content. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Comment what you thought on the battle. And as always, you guys, comment with your feedback on it as well. But let us know what you think of our new team. You know, is there any way we could have improved it? And what have you. But you guys have been absolutely amazing. I've been giving great. This is me, signing off.